On June 17, 1989, Lee Sylvania State Park was officially opened to the public. The park features a unique combination of natural and historic resources, as well as a variety of quality outdoor recreational opportunities. Situated on the Potomac River between Neabsco and Powell's Creeks, the park site features two miles of waterfront, mature forest, a variety of wetlands, and a rich cultural history that dates back to pre-colonial times. Archaeological evidence suggests that Native American tribes set up seasonal camps to hunt and to gather the area's abundant plants here on this Potomac River Peninsula. The seasonal migration of waterfowl and fish and an abundance of game provided a rich food source that brought these peoples back over thousands of years. In 1607, Captain John Smith left the new English settlement at Jamestown on a voyage to explore the Chesapeake Bay. Smith sailed up the tidal Potomac River as far as present-day Washington, D.C. This exploration paved the way for a slow expansion of English settlements into the tidewater lands of what is now Prince William County. Henry Lee II inherited this land in 1747 and established a colonial plantation where he grew tobacco and grains and raised livestock. Lee built a home on the property, much like this one, and called it Lee Sylvania, meaning Lee's Woods. In 1753, he brought his new wife, Lucy Grimes, here from the James River Shirley Plantation. Lucy Grimes and Henry Lee lived here for the remainder of their lives, raising eight children. All of their five sons became prominent, gifted public servants. It was their firstborn son, however, who became the most famous son of Lee Sylvania, Henry Lee III, nicknamed Light Horse Harry. Light Horse Harry equipped, trained, and led a dashing elite force of cavalry during the Revolutionary War. His unit performed with such daring and success that the Continental Congress awarded him a rare gold medal of valor. In 1976, the citizens of Prince William County recognized his contributions to the nation by commissioning the park's bicentennial monument in his honor. The Lee Family Cemetery is located here on a wooded ridge overlooking the Potomac. A brass plaque at the site underscores their historic importance. The plaque also notes that Henry Lee III was the father of an even more famous American military leader, Robert E. Lee. In 1825, Captain Henry Fairfax purchased the estate from the Lee family. Both he and his third wife, Elizabeth, died in 1847 and were buried near the Lee family cemetery. Their son, John Walter Fairfax, inherited a portion of the estate which is within today's park boundaries. At the outbreak of the Civil War, Fairfax offered his services to the Army of Virginia and soon became a prominent member of Confederate General James Longstreet's staff. Fairfax witnessed many of the great battles of that war, such as Bull Run, Antietam, and Gettysburg. He survived all four years of the bloody conflict and witnessed the final surrender at Appomattox Courthouse in April 1865. In 1877, he returned to Leesylvania to live out his life. The old soldier passed away in 1908 at the age of 79, and his residence at Leesylvania burned down shortly thereafter. This chimney and foundation are all that remain of Fairfax's home today. Leesylvania Plantation was of some strategic significance during the Civil War. Freestone Point, on the park's northeast corner, provides a commanding view of the Potomac River. In the first year of the war, Military attention focused on this and other prominent bluffs to the south. 
Ironically, it was General Robert E. Lee who issued the order to build an artillery position at the site of his ancestral home. A battery of three cannon was placed here to control the shipping lane leading to Washington, D.C. The protective earthworks at the battery are still here for the park's visitors. On September 25, 1861, three Union warships approached Freestone Point and opened fire on the battery. The Confederate gunners returned fire, and the battle raged for several hours. Shortly after the battle, the Freestone Battery was abandoned in favor of larger ones at Possum Point and Quantico. After the Civil War, new development came to Leesylvania. In 1872, the railroad connecting Washington and Fredericksburg was completed. Much of the timber that was used for ties and trestles was cut from the forests here at Leesylvania. This railway bisects the park and is still in use today. During the early 1900s, Leesylvania was operated as a private hunt club. Hunters were attracted to the site by its abundant waterfowl. Over time, however, increasing pollution of the Potomac River combined with overhunting the ducks and geese led to a gradual but dramatic decline in waterfowl populations. The club was closed by the 1950s. In 1957, the Freestone Holding Company purchased the site with an ambitious plan to develop an extensive waterfront resort. The plan featured a hotel, golf course, marina, and a floating restaurant and casino. The centerpiece of the resort was the SS Freestone, which offered dance floors, live music, a fine restaurant, several bars, and scores of slot machines, also known as one-armed bandits. The ship was docked just offshore in Maryland waters. Both gambling and liquor by the drink were illegal in Virginia, but not in Maryland. So a short walk on the newly constructed pier leading to the ship allowed patrons to cross the state line and indulge in these uncommon recreational pursuits. Soon after the resort's grand opening, the company was faced with public concern over the propriety of the casino operation. Political pressure mounted, and by late 1957, the same year that it had opened, the casino was forced to close, effectively ending the plans for continued development. The recreational facilities that had been completed continued to operate as an amusement park through the early 1960s. When this too failed financially, the fledgling resort development closed for good. In 1978, the owner of the property, Daniel K. Ludwig, was convinced by local citizens and historic groups that the historic Leesylvania site should be preserved for public enjoyment. Working with the state and local officials, Ludwig agreed to sell the property to the Commonwealth. Legislation was passed by the Virginia General Assembly in 1978, authorizing the acquisition and development of Leesylvania State Park. Leesylvania State Park has been developed for a variety of recreational uses. An extensive picnic area fronts on one half mile of natural sand beach. In addition to shelters and restrooms, a modern children's playground is here. State-of-the-art boat launches provide convenient access to the tidal Potomac. A marina store offers food, boating and fishing supplies and gasoline. Year-round boat storage is available in a secure fenced yard. Six miles of hiking trails permit the pleasures of wildlife watching as well as leading visitors to the park's many historic attractions. The visitor center features a historic museum, a nature discovery center, and a well-stocked gift shop. Miles of waterfront provide ample shoreline fishing opportunities, including a large covered fishing pier at Freestone Point. A tents-only group campground is available upon request for groups of up to 50 people. The park is open year-round, dawn to dusk, for our visitors' enjoyment. Be sure to visit in every season. There is something here for the whole family, so come often. Discover nature. Relive history. Leesylvania has it all.